All right, so um, I noticed something very interesting in uh, building this radio, and um, I thought it would be a good chance to talk about amplifiers. Um, I, I was very, very interested in the uh, audio amplifier that was in this uh, particular radio. Um, it seemed a bit crazy that they would spend the money for two uh, transformers just for the audio amplifier. These two transformers are there only for the audio amplifier and uh, the audio amplifier was three transistors and these two tra uh, transformers and um, uh, it seemed interesting that that's that's how they chose it and so I started looking at that amplifier and uh, it looked very similar to another one that I'm familiar with and so I thought I'd kind of go through amplifiers and uh, help you with understanding uh, some of the some of the designs that that you may see in um, in uh, things that aren't AM radios. Um, so let's first take a take a look at uh, at this amplifier. This is a Class B amplifier, um, and it's a push pull, right? So there's an NPN transistor and a PNP transistor. So if we have a a positive voltage here that will turn this uh, transistor on and we'll get a positive voltage on the output and if we have a negative voltage here then this uh, PNP will start to conduct and we'll have a negative voltage so uh, it, 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 it's a push-pull follows up and down um, so uh, there is a problem with this particular amplifier and um, that is uh, this transistor won't turn on until you get above 0.7 volts. You need to get at least above the um, the base emitter uh, junction voltage. So if you sent through a signal, um, the area between 0 volts and 0.7 volts, this transistor will never turn on and, and you'll get ground. And the same for the negative. If you get down to negative 0.7, nothing will happen until you get past that. And so a nice sine wave here will turn into this ugly sine wave on the output. Um, so that's no good. So uh, we need to bias these transistors so they're just ready to turn on. Uh, we kind of overcome overcome this voltage drop. And uh, this is one way of doing it. Um, since this is a basically a diode drop, if we put a diode drop on the input and, and, and uh, uh, create uh, like a 0.7 volts here and a minus 0.7 volts here uh, then these transistors are just about ready to turn on and um, if we then have a signal it will be replicated on the output so this is this is a biasing circuit so uh, you can use a diode to bias it uh, you could use some other way of biasing it but you you need to be able to get 0.7 volts into here and you need to be able to let it wiggle up and down um, you may say see these with uh, maybe a, a capacitor uh, something like this so you, you you drive this node with a capacitor and this node with a capacitor you may say different implementations of this but uh, basically you use this um, this diode to bias it up that now that gets to gets you to a certain point. There's still some non-linearity in these uh, transistors when they're just ready to turn on. They're a little bit better if they're kind of already going um, instead of having to get them to start. So you may also see circuits where uh, maybe there's two diodes in here and uh, what you're doing is you're uh, allowing these two transistors to turn on a bit. Um, even at zero volts, there'll be some current draw through this thing, so it starts to it starts to be a little bit more power hungry, but it it ends up being a little more linear, and uh, uh, this is a class A B amplifier. Uh, when you turn it on a little bit, um, uh, you're using a little bit of the A. An A uh, class amplifier is always biased on; it's always drawing lots of current. A B amplifier is this push pull that's kind of neutral in the middle. Um, and AB is kind of a combination of of the two, so um, that's going. That's what's going on here. All right, so here is our radio, our uh, our little transistor radio. This is its schematic. Um, pull out a bit in case you actually want to pause the video, take a look at this thing. Okay, we went through this before: the oscillator, uh, IF section. Uh, AM detector and then audio amplifier. So this is the section here that I'm that I, I found very very interesting. Um, so let's take a look at just that. 
Um, so I, I removed just that section here. Okay, so we have the speaker on the output, and it goes into this transformer. So this, this right here is a this this right here is a transformer, and this right here is a transformer. And I uh, probably shouldn't have drawn on it, but uh, let's see here. Okay, so what we want to see is um, how does this thing work? Um, we have a transistor that's wiggling up and down on the input, and this coil here is connected to our plus V, so it wiggles up and down and, and starts a magnetic field, and then it wiggles this one. And then we have these two transistors then wiggle, and then they couple into this transformer and it goes out. So let's uh let's redraw that okay so this is this is really what's going on um, if you if you noticed here we don't have an NPN and a PNP we have two NPNs um, and we can only do that if we use this uh, transformer idea so um, if if this input creates a magnetic field in this transformer and uh, these start to wiggle up and down. If they wiggle in the positive direction, then then this transistor will turn on. And if they wiggle in the negative direction, then this transistor will turn on. Um, so if the current is flowing basically in this direction, then that transistor will turn on. And if the uh, current is flowing in this direction, then, then this transistor will turn on. That's probably more accurate. And they return to ground. It allows you to use two transistors that are the same type. And a lot of times you can get much better uh, NPN transistors than you can PNP transistors. Um, if you have a, a, an amplifier like this, you might have a hard time matching your PNP transistor and your NPN transistor. It might be hard to find a matched pair here, but it could be very easy to find a matched pair if they're both the same device. Um, so if we have, like I said, uh, things wiggling up and down, um, then this one turns on, then this one turns on which means that over here we have a uh, current flowing in one direction and the other direction. Now, the way that this works is this transistor has a re return path to ground and the other end goes through this coil and then the center tap goes to plus V. So this might be a little bit confusing to think about this thing where it's up to, upside down and this back and forth. And, but this is what each transistor is doing, okay? So each transistor is uh, being driven with a transformer and it's when it's uh, in the positive direction, it will turn on, and uh, otherwise it will stay off. It will induce current in this trans in this coil here, which then sends an output. So wiggling on this this side gives you wiggling on this side, um, but but only uh, uh, in one direction. If it, if the current moves in one direction, you'll get something on the output. If it moves in the other direction, then this transistor won't work any longer, and nothing will come on the output. So you, you need basically a push-pull thing. You need one transistor to do the half of the waveform and the other transistor to do the other half of the waveform. So that's what we have here. We have uh, this transistor handling the bottom half of the waveform and this transistor handling the top of the waveform. So if we have a uh, uh, sine wave coming in, then this part of the circuit handles the uh, positive part of the waveform and this uh, section here handles the bottom half of the waveform. And um, if you think about it, we're going to have the exact same problem that uh, we did in the Class B amplifier. This transistor won't do anything until we get to 0.7 volts, and this transistor won't do we do with uh, won't do anything until we get to 0.7 volts. So what's going to happen is we're going to have the same problem as before. We're going to get this ugly output here. So we have to figure out some way of biasing these transistors. Um, now we have this center tap here, and uh, we could uh, we could short that to ground, and that would be our standard kind of class B distorted thing, or we could try to get 0.7 volts here. If we had 0.7 volts in this tap, then at DC uh, there'll be 0.7 volts here, and there'll be 0.7 volts here and the transistors will be ready to go. They, they, they will be biased, just a little, just ready to turn on. And then if we want to go to a class AB amplifier, maybe we can, uh, maybe we could have 0.9 volts, where these, both of these transistors are on just a little bit, and we get a little bit better linearity, works a little bit better. 
Um, so we need to find some way of creating some type of bias voltage for uh, for a circuit like this. So if we take a look at uh, the Chinese uh, amplifier here, uh, this is where we want to create a uh, pen out of the way. This is where we want to create our, uh, our, our, our 0.7 volt bias uh, to get these two transistors to, to turn on almost, almost all the way. So we're going to do that by using this diode. So this diode is going to create, this diode and this pull-up resistor here creates 0.7 volts here, right? So you get 0.7 volts right here, and that gets applied to the center of this uh, uh, transformer, and that biases these two, these two um, transistors just ready to turn on, and then, and then the whole thing works. So this may look very, very familiar if you've ever worked on ham radio equipment. Um, let's take a look at that. So this is a, uh, a schematic of the um, final amplifier in a Kenwood uh, TS430. All right, And it looks quite complicated and you go, oh no, I'm not going to be able to figure this out. Um, but if you look close, you're going to notice that we have two NPN transistors. We have things that look like uh, transformers. and um, if we um, try to simplify the schematic, so I took the schematic into uh, Microsoft Paint and I erased everything that's not important, and you end up you end up with this. Now this is a two-stage amplifier. It's very very similar to um, our Chinese amplifier. If we could just get rid of this portion, right? We have one drive transistor, we have a, a transformer, we have the uh, to NPNs, a transfer on the output, and our speaker would go here. Now, uh, in an amplifier, this one gives you 100 watts. Uh, this is what's called the drive, uh, the driver, and so this may generate a few watts, and that then generates, uh, maybe this generates 10 watts, and then that feeds into this amplifier, then the whole thing uh, goes on the output, and this thing generates 100 watts. But let's take a look at this uh, schematic. Um, it looks very, very familiar. Um, Remember that we had to get some type of bias voltage here. We wanted 0.7 volts or maybe 0.9 volts if we wanted to turn it on a little higher. Well, the way this amplifier um, works is it comes down to this little circuit here. Now, there is a, a variable resistor that allows you to set some voltage, but you need a very, very uh, solid connection here. You, 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 you can't have the amplifier pulling that voltage up and down. You need something really, really solid. So the, what they do here is they have an emitter follower. So this is this is an emitter follower, and so the 0 0.7 volts that we generate here on the um, potentiometer is a very very stout 0 0.7 volts here on the output of this uh, of this uh, um, NPN transistor, and that's used to set this bias voltage. And there's another circuit here that sets the bias voltage for these two resistors uh, transistors. So in, in an amplifier like this, uh, you're told um, how much current should be dissipated when nothing is happening. Um, and that's the way you set this thing. You, uh, you first set this uh, uh, di uh, uh, potentiometer off, so there's no current draw in this section. And then you measure uh, the current draw in the uh, power supply. And you turn this one entirely counterclockwise, so there's no current draw here. So then there may be some type of specification. Let's say it's 100 milliamps. They say we want 100 milliamps quiescent current in this particular driver. So you start increasing this uh, voltage until you start biasing these um, uh, transistors on until you get to 100 milliamps. And then you know you have this one set. And then uh, once you have this one set to 100 milliamps, then it may say, okay, we also want 100 milliamps over here. So you start adjusting this one until you get 200 milliamps total, 100 milliamps here, 100 milliamps here, or something like that. Um, so the driver bias and the final bias um, in this particular radio, there's two knobs that you have to adjust. Um, but what's going on here is it, this is exactly, exactly the same circuit as our little transistor radio. Um, so uh, I guess good ideas are good ideas. Um, I, I'm not really, 
sold on the idea that you had to do it this way in a little seven transistor radio that you had, actually had to have two um, um, two output transformers, but um, that's what they decided to do.